Hello and welcome to historic Douglas Park in Rock Island, Illinois for the fifth annual Vintage Football Game. I'm Tom Pryor alongside Vintage Football <laughs> Analyst John Marks. Nearly 100 years ago on this very field, the Rock Island Independence and the St. Paul Ideals met for a football game and today we're celebrating that really as the birth of professional football. Well, Rock Island's always had that that place, that 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 unique niche in the in the National Football League. This is the, the birthplace of many football. Canton, you can have whatever you want. It all started in Rock Island here, Douglas Park, and I call it historic and scenic Douglas Park. Great day to be here. So here's a quick history lesson for everyone. The National Football League officially formed in August 20th of 1920 and it was originally called the American Professional Football Association. You know what, the APFA. The league changed its name to the NFL in 1922. Shortly after the APFA was formed in 1920, the Rock Island Independents played a non-league opponent, the St. Paul Ideals, on September 26th, 1920. The Independents won that game 48 to zero. Wow, well, Rock Island's football roots, they're traced back to 1902. The Independents beat the Davenport Standards six to nothing. And the Independents' first documented full season was in 1907. By 1919, they were one of the elite football teams nationally. And Johnny, that, that's why they were invited to join the NFL. It was it was as cool a thing as you ever would have uh, imagined at that time, fr time frame, excuse me, and within uh, the period uh, in, in the city of Rock Island. You know what, in 1907, Tommy, two, one, and three overall record. And then they outscored their opponents by 82 to 12. Then in 1919, the Independents finished nine, one and one, and shut out and beat every team they faced from Ohio. The Independents challenged Jim Thorpe's, obviously. We've heard years and years about the Canton Bulldogs, who were 10-0 and 0 to a game to settle the title. After ongoing discussions, and I've, I, there's some background to all of this, <laughs> uh, over a month, Thorpe said his team disp dispersed for the season and that they couldn't play. I think Thorpe didn't want to play, uh, pay his players. Canton and Rock Island both claimed the championship, championship, but it was a 1919 season that helped the Independents become one of the charter members members of the APFA in 1920. During the APFA NFL years, the Independents posted a 42 and 14 and 13 mark. Then in 1926, Rock Island left the NFL to join the AFL. A year later, the team and the league sadly folded. Unfortunate that it did fold, but there were a lot of great players that came through this team oh. in the, the 1920s. The Independents had four Pro Football Hall of Famers suit up for their team, and there you see them. Jimmy Conselman, Joey Kite, Ned Healy, and of course Jim Thorpe. And, and as lore will have it uh, uh, throughout the the city of Rock Island, um, they someone somewhere, and I, I can't, and I do that. I'm that fact checking business. Um, so the Jim Thorpe had a bar tab somewhere that wasn't paid. So yeah, yeah. I don't know what it turned out to be where it was, <laughs> but uh, that's one of the stories that have been passed down, uh, passed down through. And then. Uh, you know what, half of this historic celebration is, is about the independence. You're exactly right. And the other half, of course, is about the historic and iconic scenic Douglas Park. <laughs> and we'll see uh, what it takes each year to turn that baseball diamond that we have here into this vintage football field each season. We'll have that after the break on MC22. Welcome back to our broadcast of the fifth annual vintage football game at historic Douglas Park in Rock Island, Illinois. John, this park has seen all sorts of different pro and semi-pro teams, well, uh, over the last century, really. Uh, and you know what? I, I, I've had the opportunity to be part of, uh, of many of that. The neat thing is uh, it named, originally named City Park. The park opened in 1905, Tommy. There is a photo of the Rock Island Rocks playing a, high, playing a football game here in 1915. Uh, take, <clears throat> excuse me, then in 17, the park's named Douglas Park. And then after U.S. Senator Stephen Douglas, you, after U.S. Senator Stephen Douglas, here you can see the park's grandstands in 1922. Now, besides the home to the Independence, Douglas Park was also the home to minor league baseball team, the Rock Island Islanders. And one final note, the first college football game between Iowa and Illinois wow. was played at this park in 1889. The World Softball Tournament's been here, Tommy. i uh, played in hundreds of semi-pro baseball games here. This is uh, it's gorgeous. So let's forward to today, and we'll look at uh, the great work that's been done uh, by the Rock Island Park and Rec Crew and the renovated baseball diamond here at Douglas Park. I could talk for days about what David is able to do out here. It's unbelievable. 
what uh, one man and a very small seasonal crew can get done. What I do to build this field is go back to what it would have been like when the first NFL game was played. So it won't have numbers, it doesn't have a lot of the hashes, um, it's pretty simple. He's constructed all of the goal posts. Um, all of the signage you see painted on the field is custom made by David. The goal posts uh, were something we thought of for temporary purposes when, it first, when we first started this. Even though the field was not um, to the scale or to the quality that it is now, we started before the reconstruction. Um, we knew that we, because there's baseball played here, it had to be something temporary. I didn't play the first year because I was, uh, didn't know how much it would take to put the field together. I discovered after the first year that I could get it all set up and still play. David's been instrumental in everything that we do here and uh, he's invaluable to the department. Looks just like a 1920s field here today and of course the equipment as well. And coming up after the break, it's time to meet those current players suiting up for these vintage teams. And we'll have kickoff as well. You're watching the fifth annual vintage football game on MC22. We're about to get underway for the fifth annual vintage football game here at Douglas Park in Rock Island, Illinois. We'll take a look at All the right, roster. Some of these local guys who's our, who are participating in this game today. And uh, of course, Simon Harry, you see at the very top for the independence, helping organize this great event. And, and just <laughs> there's, there's what's, what's cool about all this is that some of these guys had relatives that played in that era, I got yeah, that. and that was uh, something you can't uh, you can't take back. Uh, I know I have no guys personally. The Sean right, Brandon, right. Brayton Curry's and the Sean Bell's and and uh, the Ramon Taylors and Odessa McDowell's. Uh, you know Ethan Stefanich, one of those kids that uh, uh, I've known forever, and, Ran and Randy V. So Josh Anders should be fun. Jared Request, great day. They're playing for the Independence today. They also the St. Paul Ideals. There's their roster, and then Chris Zimmerman and his son Simon Zimmerman at the top. I got to meet him today. It's, it's funny that uh, and, and they did, you know he didn't know Simon Herrera, and uh, they have that great knit relationship with uh, uh, his son Simon. So uh, pretty cool. Uh, Luke Cooley, guys like that, ex players, uh, Gage Dempsey, uh, you know, Tyler Reagan guys that you want to watch. Um, I don't see Billy Hogland's name, who had a 66-yard drop kick <laughs> in, in this game. So um, the great Northern uh, Iowa kicker. And these teams, obviously, you can just tell by the way they're dressed, all of the equipment, the uniforms. It's, <laughs> it's we're vintage, really man. going back in time. It's, it, they, they, that was the, one of the impetus of the beginning, was the, the jerseys, the leather helmets, and, uh, and the style pants of the era. The ideals are in black, the independence in green, receiving deep. <laughs> that was all great. I'm sorry. There he is. He wasn't on the original. No one out here could do that but him. He kicked the ball through the upright right there. And this is an 80-yard field, so not 100 yards as you're used to with regular professional football. And because of that being a touchback, they start on the 10-yard line. So you get used to the rules and the, the regulations as we go on here. But again, you'll see some familiarity to still the game that's played today. Exactly. And it's, it's a 20-minute running quarter, too, uh, four quarters. And then uh, that's the one that bugs me is the goal post on the goal. I like mm. that. And then the hash marks are 10 yards from the sideline. Uh, the, the neat thing, any end zone incompletion is a touchback. Extra points can be dropped or placed. So you'll get to see some, some unique kicks today. What's fun too is that these first down markers are at the 20 and the 40 on each side. So it's it's essentially kind of a, a first and 10 here for Rock Island. And you'll see Johnny, some of that huddle as well that's very similar to the style we see today. Five on the line, a quarterback, and then three men in the backfield. And then you're gonna, you're gonna call color, like blue, you'll hear red 80 or blue 80. Good stop by the defense there from the ideals. That was a, a run to the right. Didn't go much anywhere for the independence. And if we can get a shot of it, felt just watch the football. It's, it's a balloon-sized ball. Simon Herrera has it went to Great Lakes to to make it as authentic. You know the balls, guys. You couldn't you can't grip that thing. I mean that's huge. It's a it's a bubble-like situation and uh, a balloon, and you have to throw it and grip it. And it's hard to catch and throw, which is why the run game was the reason everybody did everything offensively. Yeah. And you see Simon there with the flags on second down. He drops back to pass. Looks to the far side, pass complete. Great catch near the sideline before being wrapped up close to that first down marker. Well, they go the old T-back backfield, 
and then almost a, a, a screen pass, and it's almost like having the modern day trips formation out to the right. Look, you got three in the back. He's just going to run a bubble and a wheel off that, and Simon throws a dime, and they get 10 yards. They're pretty close to a first down. It'll be third down now. Blocking is allowed, even though there obviously is no tackling for the flag football style. Three in the back, third and about three. Simon Herrera keeps it himself. On the quarterback keeper. Well, he's going to be close. I love the helmets too. Yeah. Oh. Those are, folks. Those are those aren't just some plastic thing you bought. Those are leather helmets designed uh, from prototypes of uh, what they were in the 1920s. It's Luke Shattuck who got in for the tackle. We'll see what they elect to do here on a punt. They do have to call out red, and the color red yep. signifies that they are punting. We'll see what we hear from Simon. Oh, you gotta go for this. Yeah, and they are going Third for man it. through. Look at him. Gone. See ya. Blazing speed up the sideline, easily picking up the first down. Man, he is fast. That's Jared Oquay. Can't keep his helmet on. He runs out wide. Cut back, second back through, belly situation. Cut, gone. Get off me. Got to take the whole belt. Yep. He was close. Hey. Gutsy call on your, fourth and backed up. Your but. end and defensive tackle, tackle, you know, go get the first guy to run belly, the second guy through. I love the T formation. On first and 10 now, Simon takes a snap, takes the handoff, and then the pitch to the left. And another quick run on the outside before being taken out of bounds. What a good run. That was Ramon Taylor. The key to the game is speed on the wings. <laughs> this is just a, a little fake counter toss, toss, excuse me. And he gets the corner turned and Darner takes it to the house. Shattuck taking the flag again. He's done well from that linebacker position for the ideals. Got to play downhill with this stuff. <laughs> I was out here about 11 a.m. this morning when practice was going on, and, and it's so fun to watch them practice these formations because there's not like playbooks they've been studying like you do for, for weeks before you actually play a game. It's today coming up with all these different pitch ideas. And off it's the T formation, fun. off they the are? crossing. Yep, you do all your work with the, the backs. Go cross, it'll be second back through. Simon, the pitch right up the middle, and flags have not been taken going oh, all the way right down. There. Oh. Back down, yeah, he was taking that to the house. What a good run. And the Independence, after not moving the ball of first two or three plays, have picked up yards and bunches the last couple. Nice read, high snap. Boom, cut, cut right there. Boom. No flags. Oh, uh. <laughs> Esper's off Robert to the proverbial races. And four now for the Independence. They're getting close to posting that first score. We mentioned it too, a running clock. So it's not like teams are in the huddles just worried about time and time management at this point. It's all about making sure everyone understands the play and understands where to block. And making sure everyone can breathe. <laughs> so these guys are winded. <laughs> Simon Rare gathers his team, takes the snap, pitches it back and oh. into <laughs> round. And that's Mike Fentress running the ball and tackled. That's a great reverse. Out of that T formation, jab step left. Boom, fake, here it is. Double. Rumbling, bumbling. Love it. Good job by the Ideals defense to pick up on that, but Independence still getting closer to that end zone. You see Augustana football coach, uh, ex Augustana football coach Jim Barnes is our, one of our referees. He's the back judge. Direct snap now in the run up the middle for Simon. Simon Herrera, nice. If anybody knows how to play this game, this game, it's Simon Herrera. He kind of invented it. 
It is. He, he knows so much about not oh. only the history of the sport, but just he started all how this. to make this happen here. He forced the NFL to recognize Rock Island again you know, as part of the 100th. Really, seriously, uh, all his work, this game, his research, he is, he and Chris especially, and uh, the, the community owes them uh, a tip of the cap. Simon takes a snap there, drops back, looking to pass. Intercepted! Deep in ideal territory, they come away with the interception. And that's Luke Shottick. We called his name earlier for a couple big tackles, and here he, he reads it. You notice how Simon had to throw the ball with both hands because you can't grip it. Remember, Tom, three things can happen when the football's in the air. Two of them are bad. Yeah, you're exactly right. To quote the late, uh, excuse me, the great Bob Reed. And that was a big stop for the ideals oh. because Rock Island was just moving the, in the ball red zone. all over the field. In the red zone. This will be our first look at the ideals offense. Gather the five on the line. Three backs in formation. More of a, more of a wing formation instead of the T. Short toss, a good block from the other back, picking up a couple yards. That's Cole McCarty. You notice you'll be one back that's really, really, really fast. Watch him get to the outside. Double team on the on the end and the cut. Nice tackle. It's a good block by number 62 to allow McCarty to get some space. Almost a double team on that end, allow that kick out. Deals line up in a similar formation. Takes a snap, that's Chaddick. He's running left, gets around the corner. Picks up a few yards before being run out of bounds. That's a nice read. He could have taken the ball inside, saw it, then cut to the wing, got that corner turned. Great game. Johnny, the fun thing about this atmosphere too, and we'll see it as, as we go on, the, they've really made it feel as if you're in the 1920s. There are historic cars here. There, People are dressed historically. It's just really cool. The music they're playing is era's music, and it really just gives you that feel. And I think it inspires a lot of these players to make them feel as if they're actually in that game. The players, the chain gang, the officials, and people of the Quad Cities dressing in character and era. You can't beat that. No, you really can't. That means everyone's bought in. Nice crowd. I mean, to, let's be honest, it's a cold, windy, rainy day, yeah, yeah. and it's been that way for the last two days, and people decided this is worth coming out to watch. And I think it's cool. This is the fifth annual game. Of course, Rock Island being that first NFL team to play a game. St. Paul wasn't really affiliated um, with them, only played for a short amount of time, but this is the fifth annual game, and of course, we had kind of the Moline Tractors game uh, that's been played in the past. I know you're Universal wearing one of the jerseys. And Chris, that's Chris's team. That's how it, the, the game itself started when he wanted a jersey and he and Simon hooked up. Shaq steps back under oh! pressure. Interception. To the house. Pick six for Ramon Taylor. Read it the entire way. Played, 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 stayed, stayed, red eyes, red hands. Watch him stay, watch him come up, watch number two at the corner. Sees it, gotta get rid of it. Not a chance. Not a chance, to the house it goes. Shattuck didn't even see him coming. Shattuck under pressure, had to get rid of the ball and just a great, great play. Great move, great play. Pick six from Ramon Taylor. And now for the extra kick, a place kick will earn you one point, a drop kick will earn two points. See what Rock Island elects to do. Taking the place kick. No chance. Money. Wow. <laughs> Love it. That's Jared Requay. What a great kick. Wow. Maybe the Bears can kick the ball. You're right about that. 
That ball is so hard to kick, and he got underneath it, drilled it, great form, all the way through. Tip your hat. 7 nothing lead for the Independents. We've seen both the offensive possessions for each team end in interceptions. Rock Island takes advantage to go up 7 nothing. Shannon, we talked about this being the fifth annual game. It started in 2015, getting this vintage football It was together. a beautiful day. It was the nicest day we'd ever had for this. I promise, it's always been cloudy and rainy. <laughs> and, and people, uh, there were 25 or 30 vintage cars. There were musicians. Um, a great crowd today of people braving the weather. And uh, that might have been the best day overall that we've had. And you didn't know what to expect, and they embraced it, and everybody had a good time. What a kick. Oh, my goodness. The ideals may not be returning <laughs> many kickoffs here today. That was beautiful. First and 10 the 10. The ideals will take the ball from their own 10-yard line, hoping for a better result than their last offensive possession. Well, they move the ball, and then a little bit of a rush, and then you have to get the ball out of the hand in a hurry, and just like that, seven don't it. What I'm curious to see as the game winds on too is how many plays these teams have come up with because <laughs> if call. you're a defense, great, great question. after a possession or two, maybe you, you know all of the, the playbook. There are no secrets. Chad again running to the right. Oh, Another again. interception. He, he takes it to the house again. Pick six. That's Mike Fentress this time. If, if I'm the ideals, you might want to stop the rollout pass. <laughs> Roll out. Okay. Boot. Bama. Get rid of it. No, nope, where it was. Your quarterback rating is 0. <laughs> 0.2. Shot at the. Hands on the head in disappointment after that, and I don't blame him. This should be as much fun as the last PAT he drilled. <laughs> Beautiful. Second time just Love as it. good as the Love first. It. Man. Well, just like that. That's a good start for yeah, Rock Island, yeah, yeah. huh? Early in the ball game, you get two pick sixes. Nicely done there by Jared Requet. Jared Requet, nice kick. Well, the game originally that was played between the Rock Island Independence and the St. Paul Ideals ended by a score of 48 to nothing. And well, <laughs> we're kind of on the same direction here. 14 nothing. Off and running. The defense coming through for Rock Island. I bet there were two pick sixes in the first quarter of that game, though. <laughs> no, I doubt it. I'm impressed. The defensive clamps have been thrown down. It's misting a little bit, too, at this point. We did have a lot of rain the past couple of days, so we know the grass is, is wet as well. And that ball, I'm sure, could get pretty slick. Yep. So throwing the ball probably didn't help Shanik either on those interceptions. You want to be careful too, you want to tear up the field. Shorter kick this time is returnable. Going to the right, a great diving stop. That's Ventress. Oh my goodness, he just dove at the, the side of the guys. <laughs> oh my goodness. And got the flag. That just shows the heart that goes in this game too. These guys are, are love being a part of this. They're playing full speed. This is it might you might have flag. You might have flag next to it. No, no such thing. This is all out. That's the end of the first quarter. Rock Island Independence lead the St. Paul Ideals 14 to nothing thanks to two pick sixes. And then of course the great PATs from McQuay. 14 nothing Independence. <laughs> Hey, Chris Zimmerman uh, from Moline, uh, financial advisor. I'm just here because I love football and love of the game. Hi, my name's Dave Lang and I'm from Moline, Illinois, and I'm a heating and air conditioning specialist. I've been with this uh, football plant for five years now. I'd love to play, but 
with two new knees, I can't do it anymore, so I'm going to be the ref. Hi, Randy Vase. I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. Although I'm an account manager by day, today I'm an antique football player, and I've loved football ever since I opened a book at the library and saw the Encyclopedia Hick History and found out that Rock Island was an original. And my coaches were all Quad City Mohawks. I'm here for the history of football. I love football. Thanks for being here, MC22. Start of the second quarter, the, the Independents lead 14 to nothing thanks to a stout defense in that first quarter. Two pick sixes deep into Ideal's territory. And now the Ideals have the ball again, trying to move it out of their half of the field for the first time in this game. Looking to five linemen. Three backs. Takes the snap. Oh, nice cutback. Great tackle, nice cutback. Right up the middle. Luke, Luke shot, shot it back. up the middle, picking up a couple yards. I may be the best move Chris Zimmerman has made all day was getting in here without falling, <laughs> falling down against the table in the mud. <laughs> You're looking good. It's second down now for St. Paul. I guess you can cheer from the press box when you run the team. So. <laughs> yeah, Deals take a shot at, out to the left. Had a man to pitch it to. Decides to keep it himself. A diving stop, but still picking up the first down for the Ideals, their first of the day. That's a really nice read to start with. He could option pitch, get, they kept pitch relation, and then he turned it up. <laughs> All morning. <laughs> We've seen some offense, but the defense is... Let's, let's just the, uh, get away from football for one second. You, this is something that you... Walk us back through it. Just, it was a great idea from the beginning. Yeah. It's proved to be something. And, and I think, I, personally, the NFL grabbed it and ran with it because you guys made all this happen. Yeah, I think when you can visualize what the game really looked like in 1920. Yes. The, it, you know, it's like, oh, we should be celebrating. How are you going to do that the, with the throwback jerseys and sure. the whole look and things like that? Let me talk about kind of how this started. Um, I was actually looking for an old jersey, uh, uh, an original, yeah, Look, thank you, yeah, <laughs> vintage jersey uh, online. And so what happened is a big Bear fan, and I realized yep. the first team to ever play the Chicago Bears was actually from the Quad Cities. It was the Moline Universal Tractors. Tractors yep. So a little more investigation. I was like, well, their very first pro game where it was um, uh, uh, the Chicago Bears or Decatur sure. Staley at that Staley's. time. Yeah. Who they played was the Rock Island Independence, and so the Bears' very first pro game was right here in Douglas Park. Isn't so, that amazing? Yeah, and so another friend, Simon Herrera, had been doing Where's some research. I found his uh, website, and I just sent him an email note and said, hey, Simon, <laughs> said, uh, anytime your Rock Island team wants to play my Moline team, <laughs> let's meet at the park, and we both knew what park we met. Beautiful. No, it's, so, it's, a, it's yeah. again, as someone who's, who's had an opportunity to see them all, I think that was something. And I think the NFL, Chris, and, and maybe I'm wrong, I think the NFL recognized the commitment our community again made to yeah. trying to re bring back that history and understanding the importance, A, of this ballpark, and B, of all the yeah. things that happened in this time. I, I agree. When you think of, in the last five years, what's really happened, okay? We've made uh, four draft picks yep. at the event Amazing. Uh, in, in April. Exactly. Who would have thought that was going to happen several years ago? The answer is no one. Um, the fact that there was the traveling Hall of Fame, yep. um, that, uh, that museum that was at uh, the Putnam. Putnam. And so to have our jerseys and our game ball and stuff on display. Now, one of my family members, my older brother, said, yeah, that doesn't mean you're in the <laughs> Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, you're not say, in there. I'm in the Hall of Fame now. Yeah. Did you see I'm it? like, did you see the jersey? Because the jersey is there. It's mine. He said, no, no, that's not how that deal works. Well, that's pretty cool. So, um, but really, what has happened, I think, with the park in terms of five years ago, um, if you go back and look at the old pictures in terms oh. of the investment that people have made here. That was my next question. It is absolutely fantastic what the Friends of Douglas Park have done, what the Park Board has done, what the city has done. Um, uh, I don't know, it's a gem and it really is nice to have it polished up again. I, I, and when we first talked uh, years ago, and I don't want to get away from the significance of, of Douglas Park, but yeah. you mentioned maybe someday this this might get to move to another city and, and uh, the Moline side of it. Yeah. Uh, is there any, have, have we worked on that? I, I know, that yeah. I love it where we are, but have you ever yeah. talked about uh, making that, that that trip to somewhere? We have, we thought, you know, there was a couple of years where games were actually played at Browning Field. Yes. 
in the idea of, you know, do we want to make a, a move there? Um, we're still pretty partial to Douglas. It's I mean, hard not to. How can you not be? It's hard. I mean, this is like, you know, this, this is like is home. home. Yeah, it really is home. It is to me. So, um, you know, if we actually, uh, you know, get rested up, we actually could play two games in a season. Maybe <laughs> we could do it. But we only got enough juice in us for one game at this point. So it's um, fun and, to come back here. And we'll talk to Simon when we yeah. um, the Pine Village thing was was so unique and such. A, I, I don't want to use heartwarming, but it was that a whole city shut down, shut down and, the streets, and made and it, made said, it available. And I think there's a lot of those early teams, whether it was the Moline or the Pine Village or Canton, that for whatever reason um, they were too small, teams moved or whatever. Sure. But for those teams that were early when it was the love of the game, to have beautiful. them come back and say, "Hey, how do we do the? How do we get the old?" jerseys, where can we find some of the leather helmets, how do the rules work? Um, you know, if, if five years from now we're chatting and now you have kind of yeah. games happen around because the history, it, it's still a bunch of guys that like playing football in the That's park. That's all it is. When, well, the game has slowed down for me personally over the years, yeah. <laughs> when, when you and Simon first, did you ever envision the steps that would, and I, I know you, you hoped there was progress, yeah. but did you ever envision no. where we'd be five years later? No. That's cool. and, and knowing right now, if you go to the NFL website, yep. that there's actually a shout out to, uh, you know, cool? to Rock Island and to the vintage, vintage American football game that happens every year. Yeah, there's no way you would have thought that large of what the NFL is in the sports world that you'd be getting a shout out to these guys that are playing in the park. That's Toughest awesome. question of the day, or maybe yeah. the coolest question of yeah. the day. What's it like having your son play with you today? Oh, you're going to give me all the truth. You're going to give me the was, he, he was, yeah. he was as excited as as you and me absolutely and here you know um simon uh my son has been every year he started out as a newsie you know so he's out here passing out brochures and stuff meeting people you know at the door passing things out and last year he was you know he's like can I be on the bench he's like okay so you're on the bench and he's gonna water ball and now he's like dad it's 100 years i'm in it's 100 years you, you have to let me play and i'm like all right very cool in. so it's very cool so Chris, thank, thank you, you so very much. much we appreciate everything thank you all for being here thanks Chris Zimmerman, ladies and gentlemen we would not be playing today if not for him and this is he's one of those guys that just he enjoys it but it's not a personal thing he wanted to make sure everyone else is involved you're exactly right again helping with that organization and, and the biggest part I think that he played a role in was like he said getting all of these uniforms finding he said hard to do it's hard to, hard to, to yeah. find a place that'll do something like this for you he found a place out of Canada that would do this that, and and I mean they don't come cheap either mm. I mean you've got to the double tackle to a letters and the heavy you know it's, it's a rugby type shirt and they look fellas I'm wearing it, it looks cool yeah. and the worst part of today is I have to give this back and I don't want <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I talked to uh, Chris this morning. And he said that a couple years ago, they played a game. These are cotton shirts, and it was hot out. And he said, he, yeah. he said I lost four pounds. I'm not kidding. By the time I, I was showering after playing this game, it was just they hold sweat. And you don't have to worry about that as much today with the conditions. But uh, just a great job by him to really make sure that the look of this game yes. is similar to what it was back then. Yep, and, and he, that was his, Simon understood the history, and Chris went above and beyond to make sure everyone was dressed the part. You know what, you, the people watching, they can, they don't want 2018s, they, no, they want 1920s stuff. This is gonna be cool if he kicks this. <laughs> You'll see, it is a place kick. Looks like he'll miss. You gonna return that? To the left. Coming out! Man, is he fast. That's for Quinn making moves up the middle. Not only can he kick the ball, he can move too. Wow. What a cut after he got out of it. He was eight, nine yards deep in the end zone. Get some high fives from his teammates as the Independents will take over the ball. Still 14 0 Rock Island here midway through the second quarter. That shot right there is so cool. Officials buy into the look. Everybody here buys into the look. I think what stands out to me the most are those helmets you talked about. It really just, uh -oh. man. Look who's coming into the game. Sliding in on defense, Simon Zimmerman. <laughs> Number 24 lining up on the line. Good for him. Get you some, kid. Go get you some. Now, how do you block that? 
Uh-oh. Oh, oh, pass oh, over oh. the middle. Oh, intercepted. Yeah. Hey, go, 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 go. Number 60 moving, trying to make a cut to the right before his flag falls off. But interception for the Ideals. That puts them in good position. I think a little pressure by Zimmerman there. Hurried the ball. There he goes. Oh, tipped and picked. Cut, 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 cut. This is more, more than just a day in the park. It is. <laughs> it's the best pickup game you can find right here. 14 nothing, Rock Island. So St. Paul's still looking to score. How cool is that? <laughs> it may be hard to wrap Simon Zimmerman up being as, as big as he is. It's <laughs> sneak through the line there. Vintage. Ideals take the snap. Schmadicky to hand the ball on. There's shot. Should this just be on the radio? I've been impressed by the independence diving for flags and being successful. <laughs> like this doesn't mean something. Oh, that's a year's worth of bragging rights. It is. We were joking during practice this morning. You know why the field's only 80 yards rather than 100? We don't have enough speed and energy to go 100 yards anymore. And I thought that was pretty funny. They do put everything into this game. Yes, they do. They're enjoying it. They're playing for fun, but it's serious business. Nobody wants to lose. Schmanicke in the quarterback position. Takes a snap. Oh, counter. Fakes. Oh, fake pitch, counter, cut back, quarterback. Look at that. I think to the right, that's Schmadeke. That was a really nice play. That's a first down for the Ideals. You're in good position here to try to get on the scoreboard. Sure, those iPhones are really 1920s no, era. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. That properly equipped. I know, I know. He had the flag. <laughs> ah, had the flag tucked underneath the belt. Adam, good job, Coach Barnes. Good catch. Oh, excuse me, referee Barnes. Again, a very similar play. Schmatic, he runs right up the middle. That quarterback counters worked uh, a couple times. Fakes a toss, cuts back the other way. Vermont Taylor with the tackle. They're not going to match, I mean, quick, but they're not going to match Rock Island quickness. We'll see if St. Paul goes to the air. They were unsuccessful in trying that in the first quarter. Shattuck again lining up behind center. Takes the snap, rolls right. Electing to keep it on his own, running out of bounds. Gap closed pretty quick there from that Rock Island defense. Well, you can't run to the edge with that when that club is so much quicker than you are, no matter how many blockers you have out in front of you. And that's, he did a nice job getting what he got there. The other plays where Rock Island decided to, to put somebody in the middle to stop a little quarterback keep stuff. They're down now for St. Paul. Close to the end zone. That's Chris Zimmerman to snap the ball. Back to Shattuck. Keeps it himself, tries to find blockers upfield. Not going anywhere. The stop made by Simon Herrera. There's, a, there's the time he should have pitched the football. Mm. Instead, he, pressure come in. One, one guy had pitch, one guy had quarterback. When the guy takes that step to the quarterback, he's got to step and pitch the ball. Now, I would fake a toss right and boot, a toss left, boot right, and either run it or, or throw it in. Someone's going to bite. Yeah. 
St. Paul maybe trying to replace a divot. No, they're getting block. ready to kick. They're going to kick it. There's a snap. Schmadeke to kick. Oh, well, right. Whew. Wow. No good. Not even close. And that's an unfortunate result to what was a good drive Great by drive. the Ideals. Yep. He's out of gas. <laughs> I am too, just watching. <laughs> now, that, now, if you're, say, Paul, you have to come up with a stop. You cannot go into half 21, don't it? You'll never catch up. Rock Island hoping to close this first half with a good drive. They've been quick. They've thrown the ball well, and they've moved it to the outside. Four minutes left in the first half, I'm told. Plenty of time for a good drive, although, again, continuous clock. So I go back to the three. The T backfield. Ready. Set. Hit. Gone. Oh, got caught. Good cutback. Back to the center. Wow. <laughs> Flag didn't come off, but D'Angelo Allison with a run. And he was good in his day. Cut, cut, read, inside out. Nice break. Take up to the 20-yard line. Held down by Schmadeke. Time continues to wind down for this Rock Island team, trying to put more points on the board. Do you think you're going to have to throw it? I think at some point, go through the air. Dangerous proposition. <laughs> you're right about that. The ideal's defense, if you see a run, just try to contain. Give up four or five <laughs> yeah, yards. Yeah, yep. Just keep everything in front. big play. You don't need that. Hey, look, it's Chris Burns' brother. There's the toss. Loses his helmet. Off to the left before being tackled is Requay. Well done indeed, Jared. Requay. He's got running the football. You notice how every time he's in a pile, ball comes up higher, tight, and he covers it. He knows what it's like to run in between the tackles. Knows how to cover it up when he thinks contact is coming. You guys taking a breather on the sideline, waiting for an opportunity. Play being called out in the huddle. The fake on the toss, throwing the ball through the air. The deepest pass of the day complete. Got behind. They went fake. The Ventress guys just snuck in behind. This is a great throw. Fakes the toss, going away, and throws the ball 30 yards in the air. With these footballs, that's a that's a chore. Yeah, it is. That's a big play for Rock Island. Timeout, Rock Island. You gotta go back to it though. You may you may go toss this way, then you gotta throw the ball back the other way. They have about 30 yards to the end zone, leading. 14 to nothing. Boy, they could put a put big, big, big dent in the comeback, any comeback effort of the St. Paul Ideals. Rock Island moving the ball well out of that timeout. We'll see if they devised a special play. Still the T. Ready. Hands off going up the middle, but nowhere to go. That time it was even Stefanich with the run. I don't get that. No. You're, I, you're fighting the clock and then you 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 run the ball. The 
see what they elect to do here. I'm, I'm with you, Johnny. I thought maybe they'd go through the air again or try to decide something on the outside at least. To you might see a halfback pass, too. Here we go, going through the air. Uh-oh. Deep. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Toward the end zone. Ah! Touchdown, Torched. Rock Island. Torched. Woo. Oh, my goodness. That's the man of the hour, Simon Herrera, with the catch. Do you like butter on your toast? Another great throw. Great ball, great catch. Just out over the defender's hand. Cole McCarty was one of the deep men for the ideals, trying to keep that ball out of the end zone. No good, so Herrera no chance. with the big touchdown. No chance. Well, you catch a touchdown pass, and now you have to go hold the ball. Oh, yeah, that's so fun. Beautiful kick. Quake a kick from about anywhere on this field, I think, and make it through the uprights. 21 donut. Oh, my goodness. That's a load to come back from. It is. And Simon Herrera in his first game played finds himself trailing 21 we got you. What if This is as much fun. <laughs> I, I believe 100 years ago it was 48, don't it? Yeah. It's a, a fun day, too, Johnny, because you mentioned some of the fans that are out there watching this game. It, the community support behind this game is so fun, and that's why it's been around now the fifth year doing so, because people love to come out and really get taken back in history and celebrate the history that Rock Island has, as you said, for the NFL. Organ uh, organizations have jumped in. Uh, jumped in. Uh, corporate sponsors have, have been involved. And then just people who understand the history of the game uh, have all shown interest. And, and you know, again, we talked about how cold and windy and nasty that the day was, and there's a great crowd. The NFL celebrating its 100th year this season, and it's exciting because Rock Island was a major part of that in the get-go. And we mentioned, I know, the Decatur <laughs> Staley, some of these other local teams that played, but Rock Island, they were so good that Canton wasn't even sure they wanted, they wanted to come play them. And they obviously, there was a play. lot of... They didn't want to come play. You could say everybody went and dispersed. Yeah. First of all, Nobody was getting paid. That was the problem. And, uh, and you didn't want to go lose. It's a special place, man. This is a special, special place. Just under 45 seconds remaining in this first half, and I doubt St. Paul will try anything special to get down the field here backed up. I would play a baseball game at 6 o'clock up on the hill, come to Douglas Park for the 8 o'clock wow. Babe Ruth game, play cup ball on the side, chase foul balls. World Softball Tournament, the best, fastest softball in the world. Um, come down here and spend from 8 o'clock in the morning until midnight as a kid with my dad. Played baseball, played semi-pro baseball here. Thank goodness for Kevin Corrigan and, and the friends of Douglas Park. Amazing what they've done. St. Paul trailing 21 nothing, winding out the first half. This is a short toss, good defense from Rock Island. Counter, great call. Wing counter, actually. Time out. Stay home, step, counter. A little ball fake. Just so everyone knows, the Geneseo High School football team, which is really, really good, still runs that. Hmm. They're in the wing tee as well as anybody, and they run wing counter as well as anybody. Interesting call for St. Paul to take a timeout there, too. Backed up pretty deep, trying to save time, wanting to get off as many plays as possible, but... Long way to go. I don't know. Here's the snap. Drop back to pass. Over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Shadok. I like the idea. Go the short route stuff, have one guy, your, your wide receiver on the, the near side, run the two guys off deep and throw the ball underneath. Good call. The ideals may elect to go through the air again now. Time winding down in the second quarter. The 
Maybe devising that Hail Mary. How many guys can run as far down the field as possible? <laughs> Who's our fastest guys? But can you get it there? Yeah, that's the key. With that football, it's a long. You're on the hook and ladder. Drop back, great pass rush by that independent defense. That Rock Island defense making now, what are you tough, doing? no doubt about it. it. Are you Rock Island call timeout and trying to stop things? Up to fourth down. Well, opportunity to get the ball fourth down? They could. If I'm St. Paul, I'm punting this ball away, playing it safe. It's a good Rock Island defense that we've already seen run into the end zone off of two pick sixes. Red has been called, so a punt coming. But Rock Island, if, if you don't kick the ball out of play. No rush on the punts, that's for safety purposes. It's a good high punt. Raquay makes the catch down the left side. Great tackle. That could have been a touchdown saving yeah, tackle seeing how far Raquay was getting down the field. Just he got to the edge in a hurry. Big tie play. He lost his own flag going for that tackle. All worth it. It's Cole McCarty. How about that picture you see of all of Isn't those old players? Oh, the helmets, the jerseys. And you see that, and then you look at what the jerseys look like now, and you say, I, I, I see got it. it. I got it. I see it. Yep. Give the Rock Island Park and Rec Department mm. for bringing that photo. Played a big part in uh, the NFL draft celebration. Rock Island deciding what to do, maybe get off one more play. We've seen them complete a couple long passes, so it's not out of the imagination. Aha, uh -huh. yep, you knew it was coming. <laughs> Throwback pop. St. Paul defense recovers well. <laughs> Bailey Biscontine to wrap him up. You knew something fancy was going to be out of some book. Toss, throwback. Great idea. First down for Rock Island. They did call a timeout, so time was stopped. Just they beat they beat them on a nine route last time here. Just let it go. Takes the ball. Again, a deep pass. Oh! Incomplete to Raquay. A little behind him. Could have been caught, though. That is halftime. Oh. That takes us to halftime, too. An exciting first half that saw Rock Island score in a variety of ways as they lead the St. Paul Ideals 21 to nothing here at the fifth annual vintage football game. Welcome back to the fifth annual vintage football game at Douglas Park in Rock Island as the independents lead the St. Paul Ideals 21 to nothing. Two pick sixes and a long touchdown pass. The scoring for Rock Island. They dominated. Tommy, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Douglas Park is not only an historic gem for Rock Island and the Quad Cities, but it's also a place that's continuing to grow as new life has been brought back to the park thanks to a group like the Friends of Douglas Park. And now, let's look at some of the current and future, future renovations happening at the park. It's important for our community to bring Douglas Park back to life because of the, the history here in Rock Island. Not only with the NFL, but with the long history with, with horse racing, fast pitch softball. This was the hub, this was the entertainment hub of Rock Island where people would come down, see a football game, see a baseball game. 
you know, it was just the stands were packed. It was the place to be. And, you know, it's really neat to kind of bring that history back here to Douglas Park and what's going on right now. All the groups involved have been obviously the Rock Island Parks and Recreation Department, the City of Rock Island, uh, the City Council, the Friends of Douglas Park, the Vintage Football uh, Program. Um, and, the, and the community, not only in the West Corridor of Rock Island, but, but all of the Quad Cities um, has been behind this project. This has been a community embracing the history of what this park is, not just to Rock Island, but really to uh, the NFL. Um, in its very early days in the founding. Without our community and without the Friends of Douglas Park, a lot of these renovations would not be happening right now. Over the past three and a half years, we've raised over $1.5 million to put into this project. Um, no tax dollars, it's been done through donations, fundraising, uh, grants, um, HUD money, block grant money, uh, things of that nature. We have a number of high school uh, baseball games that go on here, uh, semi-pro 76ers baseball games that go on and other activities. Um, that people can walk to, ride their bikes to, and, and come down and enjoy, and, and they're free. And currently, um, a youth uh, ball field is being constructed. Uh, constructed. It's going to match this larger ball field, just on a smaller scale. And we have a, a multi-use sport field that's being developed now for baseball, softball, football, and soccer. We do play this vintage football game um, here at Douglas Park on the, on the main baseball field. What's exciting and what's happening in the future is we are building a multi-purpose field. So this football game will actually be able to be played on an actual football field and not on the outfield of our, of our main diamond here at Douglas Park. So it's going to be really neat to kind of see how, we can, how this fits in down here at the park um, using that multi-purpose field. It'll be a complete lit field um, for at night too. So if we want to play a night game next year, we can do that as well. When I think of where the park was when we started this, um, it was it needed a it needed a good facelift you know i think other priorities we kind of lost track of the history things like that and when i think of where it's at now wow i mean the the turf systems and the grass and the lights and the playground equipment and everything um, it just it feels like a great park if everything goes according to plan um, obviously we can't control the weather um, we would like to get those renovations completed this year. Um, they take time to grow in, so we'd like to start programming probably the fall of 2020. Park and Recreation in Rock Island, we really pride ourselves on our core values and sports are important, but what's even more important is growing positive, productive uh, youth in our community. And this is, really gonna, this is really gonna hit home with that. Well, there you go, Johnny. Some of those renovations. It's very cool to see how this park changes a little bit, and you can do some of these renovations. And, and But they've grant money. It's been done in phases. It'll continue to be done in phases, and I think it'll all work. Um, in the next 12 months, you'll see night and day. I'm just happy to, that I had uh, a part to get to see all how cool it's been done. Well, it's going to be very nice when it gets finished up, and of course, Douglas, so historic here, this park. And it's great to see some of those current and future renovations. After the break, we'll take a look at some of our sights and sounds here at Douglas Park at this fifth annual vintage football game. The Rock Island Independents lead the St. Paul Ideals 21 to nothing at halftime of this fifth annual vintage football game. Johnny, we take a look at the sights and sounds here at Douglas Park. You have the uniforms, the cars, the music. It's like you're in the 1920s. It's a realistic look. It's something that we've hoped would, would, would translate into the to 2019. It's a lot of fun. Let's give you an inside look at some of those sights and sounds. <laughs> Tails never fails. We would like to go with tails. Tails, okay, tails. It wasn't clear enough. What did yeah. they call? Uh, tails. They called tails, okay. I'm gonna let it drop on the ground. Okay, it is heads, it is heads, so. Tails does fail. You get your choice if you would like to kick, uh, defer. Those 
Those are some of the sights and sounds here at Douglas Park. Again, many beautiful shots and just a beautiful setting for what is an iconic park and really an iconic game when you look at the history of professional football. We'll have the second half between the Rock Island Independents and the St. Paul Ideals coming up after this. My name is Cole McCarty. I'm from Davenport. I work for John Deere, and I'm here to avenge the loss of St. Paul. Uh, Jared Requet, Rock Island. Uh, just here to have fun today. Have a good time. My name is Josh Stefanich. I live in Rock Island, Illinois. I uh, currently work for Genesis Health Group. Um, I've been helping uh, Simon out for the last five years uh, with um, uh, roughing, and uh, actually I added my son here uh, last year to do it, and we've been having a lot of fun doing it, and we just enjoy coming out. The Rock Island Independents lead 21-0 over the St. Paul Ideals. We're ready to start the third quarter. It was a good halftime opportunity for the Ideals to maybe think about how they'll go at this <laughs> They're second gonna try half. They're going to come back, yeah, find a way to come back <laughs> in the second half. Uh, but we, the person we have with us is going to do everything he can to stop that. And, and we talked about Dwight Clark had the catch, and Joe Montana made the throw. Well, the catch in the first half, was his. Nice yes. job you guys saw Simon Herrera. If thank you. This would not be here today, folks, if, if not for our good friend Simon Herrera. First of all, A, thank you, and B, run us through the play. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks for having me out, and thanks for coming out. This is this is great. Um, so, yeah, that very first year, uh, you know, I kind of did like a, a post-corner yep. route, and uh, I scored twice, and I haven't scored since, so it's been a four-plus four, four plus year drought, so I, I beg Chris Casper's our quarterback, give me give me one chance. I've thrown two picks already. Just throw one up to me. <laughs> Your quarterback then, rating, no two for yeah. two with two picks. Quarterback yeah. rating went down. Yeah. Ta let's go back to that that initial conversation with Chris and and you, your your thank, I won't call it obsession, but your interest in the Rock Island Independence and the website. So, I mean, that's where all this started. And yeah. uh, we don't have today, or we don't have the relationship with the NFL or today's game if, if you don't do that. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I just you know I grew up in the Quad Cities and I had heard something. When I was younger sure. about there being a team here and I you know I just didn't really click exactly what and finally you know about 10 10 12 years ago I, I realized you know this is an NFL team and no one talks about it there's hardly anything you have to go into the library and look through exactly. archives it's just not well known so I just started pouring through I the uh, professional football research association uh, the president at the time reached out to me and and he sort of led me on how to research this stuff because they had written books I'm like where do you get all these fine details of the, the plays and he said, if you go to the Rock Island Argus, they've got the play-by-play. -play. You can read through who signed what week and all that. So I went down to the Rock Island Library and just started researching and just documenting everything I found on a, on a website. Labor love? Did you play the game growing up? Uh, in the backyard. It's okay. Like no, I, I get that, yeah. And I used to, like, I loved punting the football. So uh, <laughs> my, my senior year, I pretty much, again, begged Bettendorf High School to let me come out and cool. put me on as, a, uh, like, a JV punter my senior year. Beautiful. And I, and I, and I kicked a little bit there, so... Um, love being a receiver and everything, but you know, I was happy to be out there with him. Early April, it's a cold, nasty, rainy day. You, you guys have a game. And then did you know that day? And, and, and talk about that maybe the ultimate goal for all your hard work at the end was was getting to make it a, an NFL draft pick. Yeah. Did, you, did you know it was coming that day? No, I mean, just the fact that when we heard that the NFL was going to come and recognize the city of Rock Island for what they did, you know, I felt like the NFL, too, had forgotten some of the stuff. Good so that's point. great that they recognized all those cities that came, especially here to Rock Island and everything. So, yeah, I didn't have any expectations on, on anything like that. So they said, we need a vintage player. And, you know, I took off running. I'm like, hey. I'm him. <laughs> so, so, yeah, that was that was a highlight. And, you know, just, just what's happened with the park and everything here. Um, Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. So, <laughs> We're all part yeah. of and that's the that's the beauty of all, all of this is we all have an investment in Douglas Park, which is a special place to to someone like you and I. I grew up here, so yeah. um, uh, take that a, a, a step further. The NFL vintage game, you got to go to Pine uh, Village, Indiana. Um, what yeah. was that like? And, and they got their they got a vintage game their own. Yeah, uh, same thing. They sort of heard about what we were doing. I started talking to a local historian there, and uh, she was writing some some uh, blogs and stuff sure. about it. And she's like, yeah, everyone there, it's a town of 200, so a lot of the people haven't left, and they have family there. And she's like, yeah, I know several people whose you know, grand grandfather had played. So, you know, we, we kicked around the idea. I said, hey, I could bring out all the stuff and set it up. And she started talking to some people in the community and got, got some uh, historians. They cool. formed a group, and um, back then, the town 
Brown was 200 and something, but sure. they're famous because they went maybe 10 years in a row without losing. They were a dominant team, and Town of 200 would get out about 6,000 people to watch. So that's amazing. So it, it's kind of like that now because they were so you know excited to have this again. We had probably a thousand people out watching that. They did a they shut down the the town. Oh, you talked about the parade. They shut the yeah, whole town down. Yeah, they shut it down. And we got a ride in. Uh, they had us riding floats. So they pulled us in tractors Very and cool. Model T cars and um, just they just welcomed us and they're they're gonna make an annual event as well. The last question I bother with. This is still cool. This is important. Yeah, I know it's a it's a long travel weekend for you to, to come back yeah. and be part of this. Can we expect it for if, if, if we're willing to have it? Can we expect uh, Simon and, and Chris to stay uh, involved and, and yes, be part of this? I'm definitely as long as the city and the Rock Island Parks want to do it. I'm gonna keep being invested, keep having all keep all the equipment in, in good shape, keep replacing stuff as I need to, and come out here. Um, one thing I hope to do is we played up at the Harburg House again, yes. and I'm thinking if, if they want to support that, we could possibly do one and maybe a couple weeks later do it up there. Um, you know, if, if we get, you know, 50 people out there, I don't care. It's, it's you know, set up the field, play in front of the mansion, and, and then play down here at Douglas. Uh, you know, I'm all in. I'm so grateful that you did it. Thank you so right. much, Simon. Yeah, right. Simon, we appreciate right. everything. Thank you. Simon Herrera, everyone. Great job. Would not have this game, folks, if not for him. Donnie, you mentioned it, that it all started with a spark, as you see that interception there. But Another pick. Another pick for Rock Island. All it takes sometimes is one person just to have an right interest. There. That's him. Yep. That's that's above and beyond what had been before, and he did that, and now you have this game today. And, I, and you know, I almost joked it was an obsession. It was just a guy who cared about history of something that was really, really special, where he came from, in the Quad Cities, and he just took. I'm I'm really glad, and it's a really bad cliche. He took the ball or analogy. He took the ball and ran with it, and now here we are today. That's. The world knows who, where Rock Island, what Rock Island is now, maybe because of this again. Yes. So I, I'm all yes. for that. I agree 100%. I had no idea the, the history, the rich history, then for them to bring it out and make it known, especially for the local people here to yeah. take pride in that. Can't they got nothing on us. Yeah, yeah. No. I feel can't it. Who? <laughs> but that's, again, it's, it's just nice because Man, I grew up in Rock Island, and this place has always been a big part of my life, so. The Independents have the ball here. This is the fifth annual game, the first time the St. Paul Ideals are partaking in this game against the Independents, and the Independents are oh, doing the business. Oh! Get a block. Moving all around the field, he stopped thinking maybe my flag had been taken. What a play. Raymond Taylor has just been, you know what, if you're handing out game balls, you might want to find one for Raymond. Cut, cut, see you, goodbye. Whew, uh, sorry, look Simon. Look at that. <laughs> Goes all over the field, thought he got stopped. What a play. Big run for Rock Island. They lead 21 to nothing. And other than the interceptions, their offense hasn't been stopped by this Ideals defense. Taking a snap, dropping back. Rock Island looking downfield. Pass caught. Is that touchdown again? Casper, what a great toss. Well, he can handle that, that, that football and throw it with ease. A good pass down to Bell. Great ball, great catch. Nice having a receiver with that kind of height too, huh? <laughs> In the red zone. Chain Gang, 1920s style. I yelled at him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Stefanich, one of my sophomore football players. God bless him. Great kid. Out the middle, now outside, and again up the middle. Nothing going for D'Angelo Allison that time. Come 
also a yard. Yeah, deals. A lot of hands on the hips. Pretty yeah. tired I'm out, out here. A, I'm out of gas. B, we're down 21 donut. About to go to 28. Rock Island trying to score for the first time in this second half. McQuay, he's got speed on the outside. Wow, the Nearly there. untouched down close to the end zone. He might be right at it. Watch, watch, inside, outside, up, turn. Tackle right near the goal line. He's so fast, his helmet comes off every, every time, time he runs time. the ball. You look at those things, they don't have those big chin, scraps, <laughs> chin straps and everything that really holds you down. Calling out the play, it's third down. Where's the 25 second clock? <laughs> <laughs> that too. With the back judge just counting it off. You mentioned, Johnny, getting kind of cold and windy out here. It is. You can see that just by the crowd here. So glad they all came out. Good day. Third down play, about eight yards to go. Jaspers yes, takes a snap a bit high. Looking to pass the ball. Rushed by the ideals, almost a sack, a pitch over the middle, incomplete. Intended for David Driscoll. Okay, I'm going to be devil's advocate here. Yeah. You're at the goal line. <laughs> Why are you throwing the football? With two Aaron downs. Aaron Rodgers, four downs. Lucky it's not a touchback. You're right about that. You're right. I think that's another reason why maybe passing for the end zone on a third down play. Right. Because if that drops incomplete in the end zone, the ideals would take over possession, even though it was only a third down play. And, and a touchback it is. Fourth and not much. Four, five. Rock Island electing to go for it. No kick in this situation. Casper takes a snap. Looking to throw to the end zone now. Has a man open, incomplete. The ideals defense stays strong. I think well, that's a touchback, isn't it? The ideals defense is tremendous. Could have folded, could have been 28 donut, could have quit. No, goal line stand. First down at the 20 yard line, I believe, or 10, I'm, I apologize. First and 10. First and 10. It is a touchback. Nice call, Jim Barnes. Yeah, deals. We need to move the ball downfield here, and some of the fans look on, excited for this game. One thing too, I know that Simon mentioned a little bit on was just the promotion of this event in the Quad City area, especially in Rock Island, to get people to come and support this game. And there are a lot of people who mark it off on their calendar as soon as they get this date and, finalized. And then they had a youth rugby uh, clinic earlier that that brought parents and family and young people, and they played it half. So everybody. Everybody has fought the rain the last two days and, and uh, QC weather people telling us Armageddon is upon us. So <laughs> You're right about that. Yeah, deals a nice run on first down now, turning over to second. But you got you have to play with a faster pace. Mm -hmm. or you're gonna run out of time. I think this era of game, it shows how important each possession is because there's no time management other than the only, the few timeouts you have. That's a great point. Got to throw it here. There's the ball pitched, ooh. And that's an important part of this game as well. The ball hits the ground for safety purposes. There's no scramble to pick up the ball. So the play's called dead as soon as that ball hits the ground and rolls like that. And it is a scrum when the ball is on the ground. Mm. So that goes to show too that uh, being clean 
and playing not sloppy really helps every, too. At every level, no matter what, who you're playing, where you're playing, and what, what level. Backed up close to their own end zone now, about six yards out for the Ideals. Rock Island defense applying pressure. St. Paul looking for a pass incomplete. Into the target on the far side. The coverage from Allison. I, I love the call. If you lead him just a shade, shade more. That's a catch and he's off. Now, I don't think he outruns Allison, but great call. And now fourth down, likely a punt situation. Snapped, comes the punt. It's high, it's spinning, it's a good one. Dropped by Raquay, and because of that, ball touches the ground, you can't pick it up and keep running. Disappointment, you can see on his face. He envisions it of cutting and going, and up that left sideline, they all dance in his head. I love it. Simon back on the field for this possession again. Thanks to him for coming over oh. for that interview. What a good dude. What a good dude. Simon, you gotta get out there. They need you. Rock Island getting a possession here, trying to put up some points in this third quarter. Scores 21 to nothing, Rock Island. All 21 points were scored in that first half. Two pick sixes and a touchdown pass to Herrera in that second quarter. Aspers takes it to Pichiroque. Here he has an opportunity to go up the sideline. Gets around the edge, picks up a couple. All made possible by that, that jail. Watch the fake, counter fake inside, boom, pitch. He's got to cut that tune. He's got to cut that sooner. Chris, how are you doing out here? Good. Thanks for coming. still moving the ball. When a team goes out of bounds, the ball is placed about 10 yards from the out of bounds line. So that's why go out of bounds to the right. The team now shifting to the right side of the field, meaning that left side of the field is open. You start on one hash. You play, try to. You try at this level with this game to play in between the hashes. Rock Island lining up. I run option and attack that end, and then pitch it. Not much doing on that play. Picked up a couple yards though. Jenny, you've been around the game of football a long time. What do you think is one of the biggest differences between the style of play we see now and what it's like today? Bigger, stronger, faster. Um, yeah. Smaller football, obviously. But, you know, back then, no one understood the forward pass. Really understood yeah. Yeah. the forward pass. And uh, uh, you'll notice they're in the T formation. Well, you know, that's one of the simplest formations used. And, and now they've, you run the, 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 yeah, the wing T, the veer, um, a triple option, and now you have the spread. And uh, what what pains me most that it's like today is they're snapping the ball out of a shotgun type situation or, or a pistol. Uh, I don't like it, um, but that's the way they get. Everybody's in a read situation now, so uh, you're not when you can't get under center when you're fourth and one. There's something wrong with football. So, but that's the that's the way of the future. Everybody, three wide, five wide, H backs, no longer I formation and two fullbacks yes. or a fullback running back. So. The fullback is a lost uh, lost position, and uh, uh, now it's a tight end, H-back, split in game. You're right, there are so many different reads, and I, I agree 100%, yep. I think the passing game and where that the formations have gone is probably one of the biggest differences than what you'll see here. And equipment has a lot to do with that. You used to, everything was you you blocked with your shoulders and, and you tackled it and you didn't, you got punched in the face, but you, you really didn't lead with your head back mm -hmm. then. 
Jasper's dropped back. Looking to go over the middle and complete just over the intended receiver. Headed for Taylor. Is the game better today than ever? Yes. Is, is safety taught, preached uh, more than ever? Yes. Is football under fire? Yes. Will it go away? I don't know. The NFL is still a billion, billion dollar, yes. multi-billion dollar right. company. And America can't afford for it to go away. It really can't. So you have to work really, really hard on making the game safe at the level that I coach at, the safe at the lower level below that, and the college and the pro game. But it's so fast. The game is played so much quicker today than it ever has been before. Snap on the ground, play still continues as oh, running to the left. You're right, the bigger, faster, stronger, the hits are a oh. lot harder now. It just, the game has totally evolved with the athleticism. And, and again, the rules are in place. Um, and and co give Coach Barnes credit, he's one of those guys, the advocates of uh, the, the new safety issues uh, that, that people are pressed up against. Um, Again, bigger, faster, stronger doesn't always mean safer because they are bigger, faster, stronger. Even if you, you teach a different way to tackle, then you know, I was taught 40 years ago to lead with my chin and my sternum and, wow. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. your neck will protect you. Well, that's not the case. <laughs> Ideals now have the ball pass over the middle deflected. That's a middle screen and everybody knew it. Watch the extra drop, 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 middle screen. Boom, not a chance. Four Wait guys. really on the heels during that pass, too. For a team coming together just a couple hours before this game's <laughs> played, the Rock Island defense has been great you at some, reading the offense. Great point, you got some returning guys that know each other, but these, you know what, they've talked. Um, these are guys that have had conversations. They might have only practiced a couple times together but they've been in contact with each other on what to run, what they're gonna do. Sack in the back. Pass deflected off the hands of one of the Independence players. If that ball's lofted, instead of, I, I think he has something there. He rolls right, everyone goes. He has a backside eight to it. Watch him roll. People come with him. I think if it, I think if it's lofty, you got something. Ball falls incomplete. It's a fourth down here. Just throw the ball down the middle. Run a nine route and throw the ball down the middle. If it gets picked off, great punt. If you catch it, first down. Thank you, sir. Fourth and long for the ideals. Rock Island Demons got a lot of pressure to the quarterback, too. They do so again. Barely gets the ball off, falls incomplete. Whoa! A little razzle, no dazzle. That <laughs> rush from Rock he Island. Threw that, he threw, threw that to the Mississippi River. <laughs> that ball's rolling down 9th Street. The Independents now take over possession. Got a chance to just put this thing away right now. One long possession or one touchdown, it's say goodnight. We flip it, quarter. Right, end of the third quarter. Nobody scores in that quarter, so we still remain 21 0 Rock Island over the St. Paul Ideas. We'll have the fourth quarter, the conclusion of this vintage football game up next on MC22. My name is Ramon Taylor. I'm from Rock Island, Illinois, and um, I work at the Rock Island Fitness Activity Center. And unfortunately, I'm just here so I can keep my job. Thanks, John, for the invitation. Hi, I'm Alex Stefanich. I'm from Rock Island, Illinois. I'm a student at Ullman High School. 
and I've been doing this for a couple of years now and I don't really feel like stopping. Hello, my name is Luke Shattuck. I'm from Moline. I am an engineer at John Deere and I'm here because I was invited several years ago to play in this game and I've been coming back ever since. Welcome back. Start of the first fourth quarter. The Independents lead 21 to nothing over the St. Paul Ideas. Rock Island with the ball. No one scored in that third quarter. All the scoring happened in the first half when Rock Island had a couple scores on defense and then a touchdown pass. Other than that, it's been a defensive game here today. And that continues into the fourth quarter with a good stop by the Ideals on first down. Got to open it up. Got to just go go broke, either, either let them back in the game or, or take it to the next level. One more score from Rock Island would likely put this game out of reach, although 21-0 is a, a mountain already for the Ideals to come back. Rock Island lining up again. Want to move on formation. Ball hits on the ground after the snap, and then McQuay picks it up. Man, he goes on the left side. He is. Oh fast. my goodness, that's lightning. He runs out of bounds. McQuay, a big, big pickup for the Independents. Joining us now as well is Roy Saigon, the president of Professional Football Research Association. Thanks for being with us. Wave there. Hey, how are you? <laughs> how you doing? You got a face made for yeah, radio. There you we know go. That? That's right. That's right. I like it. I like it. First of all, A, thank you for being here. Sure. Thank and and for B, me. you understand all this better than, than the most and, and what's gone into it. Is some, I grew up here, yeah. so I understand that tie to it. Um, the significance uh, of the game and, and all the work that's been done to, to bring here the game to light uh, with the National Football. Well, I, I think it's amazing it's here at, at Douglas Park. Yep. So in 1920, the Rock Island Independence played the first game here sure. against the St. Paul Ideals. So this is the last remaining park at the, from 1920. And I think that's that, that's momentous to kind of be on the same field that George Hallis played on, right. Curly Lambeau played on, Jim Thorpe played on, in the same exact field. So I think it's, it's really amazing. Okay, can you tell us, somebody said Jim Thorpe left a bar, left a bar tab downtown Rock Island. So. I, would, I, I think Jim Thorpe left a bar tab at every town okay. he was in. Every, every with all due respect in. to the great Jim Thorpe, that was yeah. uh, one of the lines as, as a newspaper columnist right. that someone said that. You make sure you ask him that. So Yes, uh. yeah. He was, he was uh, a, a hard player and a hard drinker, but I tell you, he, he was the face of the NFL for the first six, seven years. He started playing at the Olympics right. from 1915 to about the late 20s, and he was actually the first NFL commissioner. In what got you involved? I mean, and I, I, the research had to be. It is. It is. I just I, mind-boggling and fun. Yeah, I, I started out doing genealogy of the family, and then I, you know, you started to morph into things, and I started looking at some of the old NFL teams. Like, what happened to Rock Island? What happened to Muncie? What happened to Evansville? Indiana, Hammond, sure. and you start researching and you start building the facts of what team happened to these teams. Then I hooked up with, with Simon, yep. and he called me about five years ago and he said, Hey, Ryan, put me out of this game play Rock Island against against Moline, you know, right on Douglas Park. And he's like, do you want to play? I'm like, boy, well, if, if I don't want to play that game, what game, what game There is no game for you. Yes, yes, great point. There is no game for you to play. So I've been uh, dealing with Simon for the last five years or so, and I, but I'm a, a football historian, so right. I've researched back from the early days of the turn of the, cent turn of the 20th century, you know, through the 30s, and sure. I've researched Rock Island and Moline and Davenport and Peoria, you know. Thanks for, and, yeah. thanks for coming home for yeah, us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's quite amazing. Um, um, does the does the NFL as a whole and and you understand the the importance of of the, uh, the towns that you just mentioned. You the, know, I, I, I thought they lost track for a while, and, and now I think it's, it's taken a turn the other way. It re they really have lost track, other than when they did the uh, anniversary of the draft. Yes. We had that back here in April. We had uh, a game in August, Santa uh, College. Was, yep. And the original 14 teams all represented a uh, draft pick. And Simon and Chris did a draft pick here. That, that was amazing. Kenny Anderson as well. And yeah. Kenny Anderson, got to meet Kenny Anderson at 
<laughs> Great guy. Yeah. They don't make him any better. I know. And I asked him if he wanted to play, but he, <laughs> he said, I'm, my playing days are over. Uh, but it was, it was a pleasure to meet him over in Augustana. Uh, but, yeah, the NFL, you know, really, they don't do a lot of stuff back in the early days sure. of, of the research. So I'm part of the Professional Football Research Association, yep. and we researched games from the 1910s into the 20s and the 30s. It's kind of a, a rich area to research. Not a lot of people have done that. So we're trying to rebuild some of that history. T take us through uh, uh, what I think is unique was Simon had the opportunity to, to, to go to Indiana. And, right, and, yes. And a town that of 200 where it was a big deal for many, many years. It was, and, it and was. to bring yeah. a game there. Right, in 1919, Rock Island played a team, one of the top teams in Indiana, a little small town called Pine Village. Right. It's right outside of Lafayette. And uh, he got hooked up with them, and uh, in coordination of their, their summer festival days, we put on this, this game. Gotcha. And so we traveled down to Pine Village. Uh, there was like four of us from here, but it was it was the hit of their their weekend is that you know we had a parade model tees but the importance there was that game was played 100 years ago and you know it, this, it was all small towns back then sure you know the little tiny little town two three hundred people you know and even you know kankakee peoria right. you know rockford you know even des moines you know quad cities you know clinton you know up, up the river here yep. everybody had a town team and it was almost like your high school teams today to where they, they go into the rivalry against the other team, but clearly the rivalry of Rock Island and Moline. That's, that, that's been going for Hasn't 100 changed. years. <laughs> so when the Independents played the Moline Indians back in the teens and the 20s, that was always the big game of the season. They, they would play one game here, and then the next game over at Moline, and they'd switch off. There's always a rivalry somewhere, There's always there? a rivalry. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Is this something that, that can, can, and I asked Simon, and he's in. Right. Can you stay? Can we all stay involved and, and oh, make sure. this something? Uh, uh, and maybe continue to have that association. I think the NFL may be starting to notice. It is. You know, one of the things that we like to get here is we want to get a plaque here on Douglas Park to say this is the site of the first NFL football game. And I think you know, we can make that happen. You know, there's there's clear evidence that it was on this day in 1920 that they played the first NFL game, and this is the last remaining park. The, the field went a little bit differently, but I tell you. When I started back, well, yeah. the baseball used to sit there from right. um, east to west. Right, I, I've seen some of the overhead yep. views, and it really is amazing. But I think you know, that, that'll, that'll never go away. You, you get that black here, you know, bring some back to the sure. community. You know, but the Independents were, were a, a tough team. You know, they, they played the NFL for the first six years. Their nemesis was the Bears and the Staleys. You know, I, I, I'm from Chicago, but so the Rock Island was two eight and two against the Bears. Yes. yes. And they were 26 and four against all the other Everybody teams. Everybody else. <laughs> Everybody else. So uh, that was really amazing. But it's really amazing being here today. One well, last question: what, what, what would a player of that era make? What was life like? Was it a barnstorming type situation? Would they bring people in? Would they have housing? Would it, or would it just be the guy to show up on Thursday? Well, the guys all they were like hard workers. They were iron workers. The guys work in the steel mills. So then on the Sunday they'd get together and they play. They maybe make a hundred dollars a game for your Jim okay. Thorpe's. But if you were a lineman, you might got twenty dollars a game. Gotcha. Earlier, you know, it'd be past the hat. You know, you'd be playing on a cow <laughs> pasture. So it really wasn't as organized as it is today. But the guys did it for the love of the game. But they all had day jobs. Um, you know, they'd, they'd come out and they practice, you know, one or two days a week. And, and they do this. Right, was college football a little more exciting or more popular long before the, 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 the sure. professional game? Yeah, the college football was, was, was the king of football at that time. You know, you had your, your Harvards and your Yales and your Princetons sure. and all your, your big schools, Michigans and Ohio States, Illinois, Iowa. Uh, so football is kind of frowned upon is that they're being paid to play a game. <laughs> so in, in the last in the first 10 years, a lot of guys played under assumed names. Gotcha. You know, just, uh, you know, get out there and play and get their $20, $30. We appreciate yeah. you being well, here. Th thanks for please. having us. No, thanks. please don't. No, please yeah. come back. Yes. We love having you. Like I say, we've, we've been here for five years, and we definitely want to come back next Thank time. you so much, okay. Roy. We right. appreciate it. All right. Have a good day. Thanks. Phenomenal interview again. That's Roy Sy, president of the Professional Football Research Association. And that man, he has a task to research oh my goodness. this and, era. And, I, and every, ask him. And I could sit there and pick his brain and, and want to find out about this and that and, and him and that uh, for 100 years. It, that's, that's cool. Because there's an answer to everything there, and that's the beauty of this. And he, dude, still comes out in the play. So yeah, yeah. Strap it up, put it on, go get it. Imagine that. People think of the the NFL, this like you said, multi-billion-dollar corporation, and there's guys locally that are still trying to do research into the first few years of the NFL because there's just not much information. And how it started. He said, Jim Thorpe, 100 bucks, passed the hat, the lineman who got 20. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> wow. It was cool. Thank you for letting me do that. He's a great guy playing as part of the ideals today. 
Rock Island about to score again. They've done a lot of that today. What a great tackle. Not even, not, didn't even get, get to the line of scrimmage. Moline will quit. I love this. Excuse me, St. Paul. I'm so used to seeing Chris with the, the Moline <laughs> Universal Tractor jersey on. Rock Island moving the ball. It's now 29 to nothing. They scored again during our interview with Roy and then they had a drop kick that was good as well. Counted for two points. So 29 nothing. <coughs> About seven yards to go for the end zone. Whistle blown. They're back at it. Picked over the end. It's a pass into the corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Rock Island. <laughs> uh, Hawaii 88 is what it's called. Halfback pass. Raquay can run the ball, he can kick the ball, and he can throw the ball. To D'Angelo Allison. Great pitch and catch, good call. No mercy, up 29. Toss, pass. Don't beat him, step on him. <laughs> wow. Rock Island goes ahead, there you see it, 35 to nothing. Johnny, we said in that first quarter it was 48 nothing no, the trying original to equal game. The, whoa. And we're getting close to that. Trying to get to that big donut. Place kick here for the man who just had the touchdown. Tremendous. Throw. Love it, love it. Up and through, 36 to nothing. Johnny, but taking off of that, the conversation with Roy talking about this team and, and playing and then all of a sudden, the, the AFL came up that was started, and, and Rock Island decided to join that league. But then a year later, the league kind of folded, and Rock Island couldn't get back into the NFL. It could back in. No, once you once you left, it, it's like it, this is our fraternity now. Um, a, you you know you were one of those teams that that, that gave us trouble because you were successful early. Um, I, I wouldn't want to deal with George Havis or oh, Curly Lambeau. Oh, so yeah. um, you weren't part of the fraternity any longer, and they weren't going to let you back in. And uh, I think sponsorships, leadership, ownership, et cetera, um, took a powder. And, and from that, you just you moved on. Yeah. And football yeah. was never the same. And doing some of that reading, too, the AFL players weren't paid as much as those NFL players. So a lot of the guys from the independents and some of those other AFL teams Left to go to the NFL. You know what? I'll go. I'll go live in Decatur. I'll go live in Chicago, and and uh, I'll work uh, and make and make more money. The Independents were the only team to move from that NFL to the new up and coming AFL. Still a lot of history though, and as Roy said, it's, it's exciting. I love the idea of having a a plaque or something here in recognition of that first. NFL team playing. I tell you, all you have to do is, is mention it to, to John Grip, the pre, uh, who the director of the Rock Island Park and Recreations, and uh, and probably to Kevin Corrigan, uh, who leads the Friends of Douglas Park, and you'll have a plaque. And uh, I think if something to do city-wise, I'd be honored to, for for them to put it up. It'd yeah. be, it, it's cool and it needs to be done. And it needs to be bigger than just a plaque. Yeah, I agree. It should be. A it should be a, yes, it should be a big side. The ideals starting from their own 10 yard line. Uh oh! Ooh. Lucky the ball just drops dead once it uh, plays dead when the ball I hits the ground. Bumble. That I got could excited. be it. <laughs> ball! <laughs> Can't handle it. Crash the ends. The ball just threw Shoddick's hands. I just let it fly. You're, you're down 36, don't it? <laughs> you're right about that. Looking over the middle, there is that throw, but it's a wobbly one. Hangs up, Raquay, the interception. Coming on the right side, slips around the 13-yard line. But another interception to that Independence defense. And the ball's up. It's all usually ends up in a green jersey. You can tell from the get-go that was just a wobbly pass. Yeah, got they, caught up. You and throw it up for grabs. Yep. Here it is. Reads, reads, sees the guy open. But with that, look how it floats into the wind. The big thick football. 
Are they trying to get to 48? <laughs> it's possible. Only Gotta cover the spread. More. Rock Island has done a good job of mixing up the passing and the throwing too. It so it makes the game exciting. And that's, it's still that combination is effective today at the NFL level. You got a quarterback that A, can throw this football, and B, you have two backs that can just mm. are flat out lightning quick. Purple four. Goes Rock Island calling out purple four. Ready. Here's the snap. Decides to keep it himself this time, too. A good sliding tackle. This is Simon Zimmerman almost had himself a, a tackle. <laughs> 12 yards to the end zone for the Independents. They're not going to slow up. <laughs> no. Waste your divots in my right field. <laughs> and line up in formation. Black four. That combination of Allison, Taylor, and Okwe in the backfield. Oh. Give it to any one of them. We'll get it this time. To the back to Taylor. Taylor's pass. Corner of the end zone. Okay, touchdown, Independence. Everybody buys on toss. Everybody, defensive backs come up. Wide open to the corner. Easy, easy, easy. Toss. Everybody comes up. Throws over the top. Touchdown. Boy, snuck right through so quick. Forty-two to bagel. Zero. Should be running clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious to see what they elect to do here for this extra opportunity. Of course, okay, the place kick. Line drive of sort still counts as the same. 43 to nothing. Now Rock Island. Working toward that magical 48. There's probably a sense of honor, I imagine, to sure being able to play in this game that yep. you want to do your very best, not just because you're having fun, but because you understand the history and the jersey you're wearing. It means something. It means something. They wouldn't be here if it didn't. Mm. And they're, it's fun. And uh, you want to be part of something pretty cool. And this is a unique day and time and event. It is. You see that fan wearing a Bears shirt coming out of Decatur Skate of the Staley's. It, <laughs> it all ties together here at Douglas Park. There's so much history. It's the beauty of this place. And the fact that they want to make sure it continues to be a special part of the city. Well, cop by McCarty goes right. A great, great tackle. tackle. It's definite. She's been there all day. He's been a defensive stalwart. It's a little bit of encouragement for St. Paul. I don't think there's enough time. Part of their issue is Rock Island's been scoring every time. Roque has such a strong leg that St. Paul is getting the ball on their own 10, 15 That's yard line every time. Great point. They're always starting in your own territory. The, at the high school level, if you kick the ball in the end zone, uh, the opportunity uh, at starting at the 20 yard line is 17% of scoring. 83% wow. do not score of a high school football drive starting at the 20 yard line. Pass complete this time. That was good. Broken play. Nobody in the backfield to toss it to, and then a little pop pass. Watch, nobody here. Two. No, hello. Throw it. Missed tackle. Discontine with the catch. The tackle made by Randy Vase. Slaughterhouse Vase. 
That's his nickname. St. <laughs> Paul looking for some type of score here. Chris Zimmerman pointing to the end zone. Got to get there. Quarterback under pressure, collects himself. A strong pass, incomplete. <laughs> Intended for Biscontine. Last play of the ball game right here. Last play. This play, do you try some trickery? Just loft the ball in the air and see where it lands. There's no 43 point pass, so. <laughs> no, there's not. It's not an MTV <laughs> DJ basketball game, so we might as well throw it. We may have some fun here knowing it's the last play. Maybe a lot of tosses back and forth. Or just excite, yeah. A little razzle of dazzle. Give, give Simon the ball. Yeah, that would be fun. Throw him the ball. There we go. Full house backfield. Simon is back there. And they give him the ball and he's Why would you do that to the kid? <laughs> quickly wrapped up. And that will wrap up this fifth annual vintage football game. A lot of fun. Guys of all ages coming together for this community to celebrate the long history that this Independence team had as a part of the NFL. And to be able to do this, it really just brings chills to you to see this as it was 100 some years ago. And it plays special to us all. And I'm glad it happened, and I hope it continues to be that way. Rock Island. Defeats St. Paul 43 to nothing, close to the 48 nothing score of this game 100 years ago. We'll have our final thoughts after this break as Rock Island wins the fifth annual vintage football game. The Rock Island Independence defeats St. Paul Ideals 43 to nothing. It was the fifth annual vintage football game. How exciting was this, John? As cool as it gets. And uh, I hope, it, again, and we talked about it even with Simon and, and with Chris and, and with Bob, uh, excuse me, for Roy. Uh, we need to do this again, and we need to be here. And uh, I hope the community understands what an important event it is. So it was a lot of fun, a lot of hard work got put into this from all who organized it. and. Nothing will take away the history that Douglas Park and the Rock Island Independence has not only here locally, but also in the NFL. That'll wrap it up for this fifth annual vintage football game. Again, a 43 to nothing win for the hometown Rock Island Independence. For my partner, John Marks, and our entire crew, thanks for watching the fifth annual vintage football game on MC22.